Hello. Hello. People keep saying that uh, things after lockdown will never be the same again. Even the way we do church could change. And change can be bad, or sometimes it can be good. Sometimes, perhaps, things need to change. On our TVs lately, we've seen lots of unrest and disruption about the Black Lives Matter campaign. Lots of upsetting stuff. I know the whole thing has caused a lot of angst and division around the world, and strong views have been expressed. The other Friday in Kettering there was a peaceful protest for Black Lives Matter. I decided because we've been isolating not to physically go. And yet I felt so much that I wanted to do something in support of it. And I ended up posting a picture of myself taking the knee on Facebook. Now I'm not a person who likes conflict. I grew up in a household that had a lot of conflict in it and which I guess has made me a person who steers well clear of it, if I can. And of course we know how social media can bring a lot of unwelcome as well as positive attention. By doing it I got lots of positive but also some negative comments from some friends and family and even from a minister I know. And I admit I found it quite upsetting and yet I felt that I needed to do it. The injustice of racial inequality and all that had happened, it, it just got me. I guess in a way I'd never noticed before, but now it just seemed so wrong. It, it cut me to the quick. I know Jean Hollyhead touched on this on her thought on Thursday of seeing things differently. We all want to be loved and accepted and I guess there's a huge pressure to calm things down and just return to the status quo. I think one of the things that's come out of lockdown is that as we've stayed away from all our meetings and responsibilities and busy lives, the absence of so many distractions has really brought God into sharp focus. Almost like a refining of our Christian life. And that could have a very positive impact on us all and could actually bring about a revival in our church life. I was reading the other day how during the Welsh revival at the start of the 20th century, hard-hearted men, I think they said men with hearts of granite, were reduced to tears when attending open-air meetings and their hard hearts were softened and changed. And of course the father of Methodism, John Wesley, had struggled. He, he was a failed missionary until he went along reluctantly to that meeting in Aldersgate Street where he felt his heart strangely warmed. His heart softened and look what he did after that. Maureen Ownsworth talked on Monday about the worship song, Abba Father. A line in that song says, never let my heart grow cold. That's what I think is happening, a warming, softening of our hearts. Soft-hearted can sometimes be used to denote a weakness. But looking at it from Christ's angle, it can be a real life changer. I want to quote you now a verse from scripture. It's from Ezekiel, chapter 36, verse 26. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. God bless. I'd like to share with you some words from David Adam. And this is entitled Glimpses of Glory. God, we get a glimpse of your glory in the radiance of the sun, in the splendour of the moon, in the mystery of the Milky Way and in the individuality of each star. The whole universe speaks. It tells of a creator 
to all who listen. From the macro wonder of the galaxy and to the micro marvel of human cell, all God's creation speaks of great mysteries, inviting us to respond with wonder and awe. Too often we fail to answer or to react. Every eye refuses to see and ears are deaf. And hearts have grown cold and hard. We take all for granted, failing to wonder. We have lost the freshness of each new day. God still offers us a glimpse of his glory. All things sing his praises if we would listen. Their vibrant tune is heard in a single atom. The sound of music from the planets out in space. Let our ears be opened and our hearts softened. Let us join in their praises to our Maker and our God. The Word of God gives life, and life in all its fullness. The Word of God gives light to the eye, radiance to the whole of our inner being. The Word of God revives the soul, refreshes us, on our journey. The word of God is the resurrection, the way and the door to eternal life. Come to the word of life, come with reverence and awe, enjoy his abiding presence, resting in him in wonder and peace. Let us pray. Lord God, your lamp is a light unto our feet. May each of us know the love of Christ, which is far beyond all our knowledge. May we, your people, be inspired to live in this world with just one aim, to bring your love, your forgiveness, and your justice to all. Father, we know that nothing can separate us from your love. We pray for all that are anxious at this time. Grant to them and to us your peace, that peace that comes only from you. Amen. Amen. And we have chosen a song, and it's one of my favourites, and it's a Robin Mark song, All to Jesus I Surrender. This can be found on the link or in Complete Mission Praise, number 25. Thank you. God bless you. Bye.